Talking God, my grandfather. Talking God, my grandfather. Talking God, my grandfather, you will give me today. Talking God, my grandfather, you will give me today. I guess we could plan up there when we get with Nate. I'll, I'll wait till we get up there with Nate. Hey, Matt. Just got the guys loaded up. We're getting in the car. And we're gonna roll out pretty soon here. We're gonna pick up a couple of things and we'll meet you at the rendezvous. All right, later, brother. It's the game. The, the strategy that we're gonna be employing on this hunt is, uh, it's based off of the work of Paul Metal, uh, old school OG bow hunter from Idaho. It's a sequence called the slow play sequence where we're gonna work as a team. Since I'm more experienced on the bugle, me and the guys are gonna be raking and sounding. We're gonna be grunting. We're gonna be loud and sound like a bull elk that's setting up territory. And uh, Nate is gonna be three or 400 yards away, maybe a little bit closer, uh, chirping like a cow. The bull isn't going to come aggressively looking for us, but he's going to be curious to see who we are. All right, guys, go ahead and get a couple more practice shots at 30 yards, and then we're going to meet up at 50 and uh, get three arrow groups on the heart, and that's going to determine who our lead shooter is. Uh, we met a ranger when we were out here, and he told us that this is one of the largest aquifers in Colorado running under this area. And because of that, the springs are vast and numerous, and there's so much for both us and the elk, and that's really gonna be our goal logistically is to kind of track along different ridge lines, go into the draws, and try and find the elk near these bodies of water because of how many there are. This unit is about a 7% chance of success, which is incredibly low. Across North America, I believe it's 10 to 20% success rates. So we're lower than that. Using a team strategy, we're gonna try and get out into the land, and then that way, Using radio contact and comms, Matt and I can be talking about what we're seeing and where and be several hundred yards apart and hopefully push animals to each other. So it's gonna take us about an hour and a half, maybe two hours to get up there. And then we'll uh, check back in, but yeah, hitting the trail. start something off. I want to publicly apologize to you. Take, yeah. take ownership for not pacing it properly um, and just creating even more of a delay for the whole group and for everybody. Yeah. So I do take ownership in that and I'm sorry for going ahead. So yeah, in the spirit of ownership, I'll definitely uh add my part. Uh, I definitely feel like I was a burden on the group and two most important things for me on this trip were to fulfill my duty being here and filming and producing that but also not to be a burden and to interfere with this experience. Yeah, I totally got knocked on my ass today and so I appreciate you holding back with me Matt. I appreciate all the uh, tough love you give me. Other than that, super happy to have the pack off my back <laughs> and uh, get 
started for what we were, you know, came for. Altitude, definitely felt that big time. Um, was not expecting as much of a deficit as that felt, but. Mm -hmm. Definitely, a ch yeah, like you said, a challenge getting up here with the weight and the altitude, but feel like the most exciting, fulfilling, rewarding parts are yet to come and the most challenging parts are yet to come. <sighs> Man, um, feeling, it, it feels good to sit here with you guys. I've been waiting for this for a long time and getting up here um, was tough. For a while, I thought we weren't gonna make it up. Um, <laughs> what we did, so it was a good lesson, and um, we're right where we want to be. I'm just, I'm feeling ready to go, man. I want to get an out, like, mm -hmm. I want to go communicate, I want to go push, like, I think I'll just feel more grounded and more calm. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I mean, we're gonna learn a lot out here. Uh, this is a really beautiful land, definitely a very wild land. Um, so yeah, it's a special feeling to be here with you guys. I'm stoked meeting you, brother. No, I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. I'm just gonna get it going. I'm gonna blow four directions, up, down, and then I'll pass it, and then set the intentions, and then um, visualize that kill, and we'll get our gear, and we'll, we'll go try and upset some elk. Mm -hmm. Talking God, my grandfather. Talking, Talking God, God, my grandfather. Son of the early morning. Son of the early morning. A turquoise prairie dog, a turquoise horse, you will give me today. A turquoise prairie dog, a turquoise horse, you will give me today. With a black bow in my hand, you will give me. With a black bow in my hand, you will give me. With feathered arrows in my hand, you will give me. With feathered arrows in my hand, you will give me. With an arrow in my hand that will not miss the heart, you will give me. With an arrow in my hand that will not miss the heart, you will give me. With a notched arrow in my hand, you will give me. With a notched arrow in my hand, you will give me. Before the sun sets, you will give me. Before the sun sets, you will give me. Before I'm too tired and weak, you will give me. Before I'm too tired and weak, you will give me. Talking God, my grandfather, you will give me today. Talking God, my grandfather, you will give me today. We utilize mountain smoke before hunts to cleanse ourselves, stay connected to the land, honor our ancestors, and set our intentions. The Ne, or Navajo hunters, have used it for many generations. By smoking it, we set our intentions to remain in the sacred container and honor the animals we are hunting. We're also cleansing ourselves of negative thoughts, attachments, or fears that might interfere with our ability to stay focused and present. Mountain smoke is not traditional tobacco that has been hybridized, mass-produced, or commercialized. By inhaling the smoke, we inhale the land where the tobacco grows, typically at higher elevations, which is why it, it's referred to as mountain smoke or silnato. Even though we're not hunting in traditional Navajo land within the four sacred mountains, the divine beings will help protect us. We're also honoring the spirits of this land, not only the elders, but also the trees, animals, and predators. Because this is wolf country, we must be aware of their presence, so the mountain smoke will help keep us safe. I began the ceremony by blowing smoke in the four directions, beginning with east, then up to the sky for the father, and then down to the ground for the mother. As long as we have good intentions and we do the right thing, like, talking God and black God will be with us and we'll be safe. And mm -hmm. it's about watching each other's backs and making the right ethical kill. We're just gonna go scouting. Uh, we're gonna go try and intimidate. We're gonna be aggressive with our calling, so we gotta start now. Um, we gotta make our presence known.
Your heart racing. Yeah. So we uh, made a pretty big move in direction from where we were this morning, and uh, I just let off an elk bugle, and uh, we kicked up some cattle, not, not actually elk, um, but thought they were elk. So game plan was Steve and Nate close distance while I was calling, and uh, you know we we got within 30 yards of the cows before our knowing, but. If that was an elk, that was the exact game plan, so. Cool, perfect, Steve. Feel great. We had a rush of the hunt for a moment there, so. Uh, feel I was ready. Hey, Callum. I mean, if you're worried about lightning, then yeah, we should spread, <laughs> we should spread out. Thunderstorm rolled overhead, which is a mixture of rain and hail. up here for a bit because I don't want to scare any elk with our scent. There's no wind, but it's just the thermals going that way. There was no moon the past two days. 
So when there's no moon, they, they sleep during the night and, and eat during the day. All right, so it's about an hour after last check-in and uh, followed a game trail down into an opening and came up on this. So some other backcountry hunters were out here. They just beat us to the kill. They did a pretty good job. They took the skull, the trophy, all the quarters and the back straps. So they, they did a gutless method, but they left the hide. So either way, we're gonna honor this animal. We're gonna leave some mountain smoke. I found a, a feather, we're gonna leave with it just to kind of bring it some peace and uh, kind of just cleanse us of any negative or bad energy that happened here. It's interesting, we've been out here three days and the first elk we've seen is a dead one that someone else beat us to. We've smelled them, heard them, seen lots of sign, but the first actual elk we've seen is a dead one. You win some, you lose some. 